I want to show you this thing as well because I think this might be a good place to kind of leave it on because I think this should, in my opinion, put a dampener on some of you guys who have this desire to see Brendan like out on the streets begging for money or something. You know what I mean? I think a lot of some of some guys or some fans have watched this stuff or are into some of the Brendan content. I think sometimes you underestimate just how much money these guys make. Fair enough, some of them misuse their funds and don't really spend it wisely and maybe make some poor financial choices or maybe just fuck up their career like Brendan has. Like Brendan has really fucked up his career, especially if you look at some of these old clips of Brendan with Rogan on the show and you see how friendly and bubbly and loving their relationship was to see how you know how it's dissolved now and where they're at now in relationship wise you can tell they're not as cool as they once were it's clearly brendan's fault for letting it get that way so he clearly has fucked up his own career but to expect because he's terrible at stand-up that he's somehow gonna be out on the street sometime is a little bit ridiculous when you think about how much money these guys make on their pods like they make a lot of money like crazy amounts of money and i'm going to show you a post that illustrates this right this is courtesy of the final kid sub so again big up them this person said that they're uh they have you know they're part of pure spectrum right and that was the company that brendan was pushing a while because um his son was suffering from seizures and he used some of their cbd oils and it basically helped his son from you know not having as bad seizures as before which is a big thing i'd imagine right having a kid and seeing him have seizures and stuff and not knowing what to do and then getting some respite or getting some relief from the cbd was a big deal so you know these guys i'm assuming would know quite a bit about brendan and the post is as follows hey cats my name is dan i'm a current ceo of pure spectrum cbd and i'm fully aware i do not matter but i'd want to gauge your interest in doing the ama I know our company has been part of the podcast and we enjoyed discussing here. I stepped down as COO in early 2000 because I could no longer work for the visionary. Two years later in 2021, I was back um, to perform a hostile takeover and kick him out um, and right size the company. So he's clearly a part of this company. So he can give us some insight on, you know, what happened in the relationship between them two and whatnot. So just to keep in mind, again, if, you, if you're hoping that Brendan's going to be out in the street somewhere begging for money, it's not going to happen. Just if, in my opinion, I think the right attitude to have is to enjoy the shit show because this is like the best version of reality tv because it's actually real to see these you know privileged wealthy people in in these great positions find ways to consistently fuck up their lives and fuck up their own situations through just hubris and arrogance and entitlement and whatever it may be is just entertaining to watch i'm not gonna lie it's fucking phenomenal that's why i sit here in the fucking dark talking shit to you guys over the microphone it's fucking fun but i think hoping that he gets broke and he has to go and get a regular job and i think that's a bit much i think that's a little bit too much hatery energy right already it's enough doing this and talking about him consistently is a bit much i think going that step aside and wanting him to be desolate and shit and have to put a fucking you know for sale sign up in front of his house and sell all his cars i think that's a bit too much but even if you're hoping for that it's not gonna happen anytime soon because this now coo of pure spectrum breaks down how much money uh brendan was generating for them as a company and it's gonna blow your mind right because you i think some of you guys really underestimate how much money these guys make because i think they do a good job rogan being a best example of it they do a really good job of like cosplaying as like the everyman i think all comedians do a good job of it with the exception of maybe like tom segura who kind of chastises his fans for being poor but i think the real talent of stand-up comedians is that they do a really good job of like cosplaying as like working class or middle class i don't know how they do it but they somehow have this vibe where they carry themselves of every man and these and regular people kind of buy into it when really they're not they're fucking multi-millionaires who live in gated communities who fly private who have their kids in all the best private schools and shit and who make millions a year do you know what i mean like let's get that into consideration so this is an example where am i gonna see it um let me see if i can find the one where you said about the money bear with me a second i'm trying to find it i'm scrolling there we go here here so here so i read it uh, asked the, the guy right who's part of who's now ceo of uh, spectrum he said the following um what was the return of investment of partnering with shop did he sell you back his shares? How do you measure impact of podcast sponsorship beyond code redemptions? Did Schwab really cure his kid's illness with the product, etc.? And the guy replies, pretty 
honestly and upfront about it, right? He says, the return of investment was great for the company. He brought in more sales and traffic than we ever, than when we partnered with the CrossFit Games in 2018. And if you're if you give a shit about CrossFit like I do, I've been a part of that community for a very long time. And CrossFit 2018 was popping, 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 popping. So the fact that Brendan brought in more traffic and sales to Pure Spectrum than CrossFit tells you everything about this whole podcast sponsorship advertising game. It's fucking wild. From March 2019 to March 2020, his code was used um 800 or his code was used 880 times no nine sorry 9880 times but received a total of 12,298 referrals due to reorders that amounted to about three hundred and forty eight thousand dollars in commission brendan showed me so again brendan the redact brendan the liar brendan the embellisher brendan the unfunny but still, successful podcaster who basically got given a, a career on a silver platter by Rogan and Brian Callen. These sort of things are basically going to make you money forever. Like, you have to kind of understand it. That's why all these guys, that's why uh, as much as I rag on Luis J. Gomez, I think he's a, a bit of a donut. I can understand why Luis J. Gomez is trying to suck off on Brendan so much because he knows the difference it makes to be in Rogan's good graces, to be really one of his boys. Because that association, that rub, that fucking cosign can make your life forever. Because Brendan likes to say about Dana White, if Dana wasn't friends with the Fratia brothers, he'd be holding mitts or holding pads in a kickboxing gym. But that's actually Brendan Shaw's reality. If Brendan d didn't know Rogan or Callan, he'd be in some you know, MMA gym somewhere teaching grappling. Because those guys gave him a career and now they, give, they basically give him a career for life. Because even now that his you know network isn't as extent isn't as no his friendship isn't as good as it was in the past and he's not as funny and he's more and he's more disliked than ever he's still able to you know maintain his lifestyle with little to no real downgrade really to in the most part why is it because this whole advertising podcast thing is just crazy number one the amount of money they give people in the first place is just insane and number two sometimes people underestimate the reach and the fan base these guys actually have is pretty wild which makes tom segura's rant against his fans even more funnier because it's like without your fans you wouldn't be who you are do you know what i mean and most of your fans are like working class middle class people and you're telling them to like you know i don't know to to to, to stop crying and get rich <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. one of our large shareholders ended up buying back his shares it's really hard to measure the in impact beyond link tracking but i do believe it's significant in that 2019 2020 um time frame brendan really did use cbd to, to help his son with seizure free i believe he used a different brand however the local shop first then confirmed blah, blah, blah. anyway you get a point so i think for anyone hoping brendan's going to be desolate sometime it's not happening anytime soon um, all those guys that get brought in by Rogan, that get the cosign and all that malarkey, they essentially, if they don't kill anybody, if they don't, I won't say rape because, you know, Chris is still around and Brian's still around and shit. But if you, as long as you don't murder anybody and you don't go to prison, and sometimes if you go to prison and come back, like, imagine, God forbid, but if Joey Diaz went to prison tomorrow for fucking murdering, what's his fucking name, Red Bar or something, right? He'd probably be bigger than he's ever been his first day back out fucking podcast will fucking do crazy numbers so i think sometimes myself included we underestimate just how big these guys are in their little niche do you know what i mean and mostly it comes from the fucking rogan cosign because that that road that rogan cosign is is a real you know changer of people's lives like you go from being relatively okay to read to like comfortable for the, your entire life you don't have to have a regular job at all to a point where you can like quit acting and shit and just focus on doing podcasting like it's like it's a pretty mental thing but yeah um brendan pulling in these kind of numbers is pretty wild but again mention you know think of the story with it being an issue of his son 
Um, I'm assuming a lot of parents probably out there have issues with their kids with epilepsy and shit and seizures and all this malarkey. Um, it's probably way more common than people probably think it is. And if you can have a solution that doesn't require having to go to doctors and stuff and buy expensive medicine and it's open to you and it's somebody that you kind of trust on the podcast, it makes sense why people would go to it. I mean, and get into it really, really hard. Um, the only cringy thing about it was when I think the old CEOs or the CEO that ran the company before was trying to get people to like leave positive reviews for Brendan's UB Surprise special and they'd get like half off or something. It was like, it, it's, it's some law about that that it's just gross. Like it was back in the day when Brendan was like, oh, everyone's haters and trolls and shit online. And they were trying to do this opposite campaign to kind of like, you know, reset the rewrite the narrative as uh brendan would say um what are you guys saying in the chat here um blue chew is better help <laughs> crash various <astute>. shoot um <laughs> blue chew is better. that's that actually that actually is that actually is a, a bit of a zinger but very 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 true um Shub said um she'll be holding bits with the most people the pope trying to get waggled his <laughs> um tiger is gonna turn into someone like herschel walker's son hating his father yo marty moves you to chill yo big up a crash appreciate you brother thanks for another great stream az thank you brother for tuning in appreciate you man i'll be back again later tonight so don't 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 stress um if i missed anything out because i still got to get through loads of chin stuff as well so i'm gonna bring through all that stuff so i, I just wanted to update you guys to make sure that you know i'm not dead um tiger's gonna turn into that 99 percent of the world won't know who he is though lols um this red bar baby jokes have made sam tripoli lose his mind yeah but that's also crazy man like red bar goes red bar red bar goes too far with that sort of stuff like I think personally, like you just can't, I don't know, maybe you can, maybe that's the whole point of trolling. Cause I think that's, that's a part of me that also doesn't, that's the only bit of trolling I don't get sometimes. I think there's a part of trolling where you could just be relentless and just say the most unhinged stuff. But I think as men, which is kind of cringy to say, there's always a limit. And I think sometimes if the person you're trolling decides, Hey, I've had enough now, I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I want to fight you should be willing and able to kind of go there also. But some guys that troll enjoy getting you to that point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like That's what they want. They want you to get to a point where you're threatening them with physical violence because then they've won. You know what I mean? Like, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just think if I was a comedian, I would either attack Red Bar head on or I'd pretend he doesn't exist. But I wouldn't do the in-between. That's what I'd do. I'd attack Red Bar head on if I was a stand-up comedian professionally. If he was like insulting me and say stuff about my comedy and my family and shit. And say my, my, my wife is nothing but a VM, a virtual merchandise or a fucking target or whatnot. I would, I, you know what I mean? That's what I would do. I would just attack him back. Or just pretend he doesn't exist. Like just be so disciplined that you don't ever respond to anything. You literally just are like blinkers on that's the only way to kind of deal with him because the moment you you let him know that he's touched the nerve <laughs> it's over <laughs> it's over he does not stop like you know and and you know most of these stand-up comedians are fucking you know world champion narcissists and shit and you know attention seekers so they they can't help but like search themselves and check what people say about them so they all know that he exists and that just gives him so much power. Yeah, you know I mean, he must sleep with his fucking cock hard, <laughs> knowing how much he triggers these guys. It's fucking beautiful, man. Honestly, sometimes it's hilarious. Like Joey Diaz nearly threw it all away for Red Bar. Joey Diaz and he threw it all away. He literally threatened to kill him, <laughs> and then he quit. And then he quit podcasting. <laughs> he took joey diaz out he took him out single-handedly and what do you do really he didn't do much he just mentioned that joey might be back on xanax before he mentioned it himself that's it that's all he said he didn't even say that much he just said this guy's probably back on drugs again before he actually that's it and he went crazy ah oh. yeah um yeah 
yeah which i know fuck that but yeah i know but the, that's the thing like if you go on kiwi farms if you go on like 4chan and stuff there's just a level of trolling that there's no line and those guys aren't meeting you up for a fight anytime soon they're not fighting you they're just gonna troll you more the more you get triggered the more they troll they don't care there's no line your kids your dead relatives there's no line those guys are on another level like really another level so you have to play you have to know where you get into when you play with those guys